Greetings, and thanks for joining us for another Our World of Stories episode. So my name is Afton, and I am the children's librarian at the Alexander Hamilton Library. And if you are not familiar with our Our World of Stories series, it is a weekly program on Tuesdays where we look at a story that's commonly told in the United States and then look at another story that follows the same theme or topic or has the same magical element from somewhere else in the world. So, so far we've done stories from Russia, China, and Germany. Today we're actually going to be traveling to the Philippines, which is pretty cool. Now, the inspiration for this story is from the Arne Thompson Uther Index, which if you're not familiar with that, is an index or a list of stories from around the world that was started over a hundred years ago and scholars are still adding to it. And what they've done is take stories that have been gathered and they put them according to topic. So topics like magic shoes or Cinderella, those kind of stories, have thousands of stories within that one topic title. Today we're going to be looking at the theme of the victory of the smallest. So our inspiration story, the one that we like to tell in the United States, is from the classic, the classic group of stories, Aesop's Fables. So our story today is The Lion and the Mouse. So our story goes like this. One day a lion is hunting and he casually catches a mouse. Now as he's about to eat the mouse dangling from his paws, the mouse begs for his life and asks the lion to let him go and promises that one day the mouse will pay back his kindness and help the lion. Now the lion hears that and laughs because how could a mouse possibly help a lion? I mean, a mouse is tiny and the lion is pretty big, so how could it help? But he figures a mouse isn't a very good meal anyway, so he lets the mouse go. Well, some time passes and hunters arrive. The hunters catch the lion and wrap him in their nets and they leave. When they come back, they'll kill him and take him. So it's pretty serious. Then while the hunters are gone, who should stumble upon the lion but the mouse that he set free and the mouse so the lion begs the mouse to help him to escape from the hunters and the mouse actually chews through the ropes of the hunters nets letting the lion escape so even though the mouse is the tiniest of animals it could still help save the lion's life so our story today like I said, we're going to be traveling across the world to Southeast Asia and we're going to be visiting the Philippines to talk about or to explore the smallest triumphing. So our story today is found in the Nursery Tales Around the World book that is a compilation of stories retold by Judy Sierra with illustrations by Stefano Vitali. Before we start our book though, Let's get ready to travel. Will you count down with me? Let's do three, two, one. All right, we're ready to go. So from the Philippines, our story today is Odon the Giant. So once there lived a giant by the name of Odon, who went about crushing and stomping anyone who was smaller than he was. And there was nothing anyone could do to stop him. Finally, a little Picoy bird came up with a plan. So he sounds like a pretty bad giant, but a tiny, tiny bird has a plan. He announced that with four of the smallest creatures to help him, he could defeat Odon the giant the Picoya bird asked a mosquito, a bed bug, a crab, and an eel to go with him to the giant's house, and they agreed. So the five companions set forth in a coconut shell, and together they paddled upriver to the place where Odin lived. All day they traveled. They arrived at the giant's house at sunset. 
just as the Pekoi bird had expected, Odon was not at home. He was still out stomping and crushing. And so, the Pekoi bird, the mosquito, the bed bug, the crab, and the eel quickly went up the bamboo ladder and into Odon's house. Once they were inside, they followed the Pekoi bird's plan. The bed bug got into the giant's bed. The mosquito rested quietly on the back of the giant's rocking chair. The crab jumped into the wash basin. The eel curled up next to the doorway and the pecoy bird nestled down into the cool ashes at the edge of the fireplace. Soon, they heard the footsteps of the giant. He was coming up the bamboo ladder to his house. Odin slowly walked inside and sat down in his rocking chair with a giant sigh. Ah. But no sooner had he sat down than the mosquito began to fly around his head, landing first in one ear, then in the other ear. Odin tried to slap the mosquito, but he only succeeded in hitting himself in the head. Odin was very angry. Arr! He cried as he jumped into bed. He closed the mosquito netting tightly and lay down. Ouch! Ouch! What's that? Who is biting me? Odin kicked and hit, but the bed bug kept on biting. The giant soon found himself wrapped up in the mosquito net, hitting himself again. Odin ran across the room to the fireplace. Was it the fireplace? He wanted to get a burning ember to light a lamp so that he could see what sort of beast was attacking him. But as he bent down to look in the fireplace, the Pekoi bird began to flap his small wings, whirr, 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 making ashes fly into the giant's eyes. Ah, my eyes! Odin ran to the wash basin and plunged his face into the water. Then the crab grabbed his lip and squeezed hard. Help! Help! The giant cried. My house is haunted! As Odin ran, screaming toward the door, the slippery eel stretched his body across the threshold. Odin the giant stepped on the eel's tail. Whoops! He flew up high in the air. Then he came down and landed on the ground with a thud that was heard for miles around. Odin the giant ran away into the forest as fast as he could. And no one has seen him since. So that is the story of Odin the Giant from the Philippines. And in this story, the four, five small creatures, the bird, bed bug, mosquito, crab, and eel, triumph over the bully giant. So in our two stories today, we had some similarities and a lot of differences. They were pretty different stories with one shared theme, but lots of different actions and lots of different ways that the story played out. So for your secret code in our summer reading program, worth 30 bonus points, we want to hear some of the things that you noticed that were different in this story. We'd also love to hear any suggestions for stories that you have that you would like to hear as our summer goes on. So if you know of any really great stories from different countries or cultures around the world, we'd love to hear those too. And maybe we'll even share some in our story time. So again, you can share things that you've noticed that are different or your story suggestions in the comments, or you can email me at afrancis at ahmfl.org to get that secret code for summer reading. So we hope that you enjoyed our story today and we hope that we will see you again next week as we explore more of our world of stories. Bye.